Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I hope uh, that has come to you. We will now move into the time of the word. We want to congratulate everybody who is able to be here today. Great step of faith. Last week we heard how God kept Pastor George and family safe. You all have been continuously praying for Pastor Thomas George. Effectively there was a, an attack on the leadership. Now some people ask why this may have happened. Let me strengthen you by telling you none of the disciples were put on the cross. Jesus was put on the cross, right? The leadership has to go through for a greater outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we go through, Paul goes, went through such struggle in his life because he was a man God had called to be a mighty leader. Today we have 14 or 13 letters of Paul which we use, the Holy Spirit uses a scripture. And those letters did not come because Paul was comfortable. You know, the devil came and asked me, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Then why did this happen to the leadership? I said, because they are called for a greater purpose. When Jesus went on the cross of Calvary, no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper was still the promise. But I want you to know, sometimes God takes us out of even our spiritual comfort zone to develop in us the power and the authority of the Son of God. If you ask me today, I'm standing with so many times the power of resurrection. So many times I can say the same thing about Pastor George and Sister Jesse. And all our families, great is the purpose. And we all went through a brokenness. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus went through brokenness. His body was broken in front of the whole world. But on the third day, remember that clip I used to continuously send you. Do you remember that majestic way Jesus came out of the grave? Well, that's the way I stand today. I don't know about you. The devil thought he could destroy me. He thought he could destroy all of us. It will never happen. Because we serve a God who has the last say in my life and your life. We serve a resurrected Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 People of God, I want to welcome you tonight. To a time when we can all meet as family in Zoom. I hope we can all see each other. That's the idea. To have fellowship. To see, to talk. To find out how we are doing. Um, at 7 o'clock. If your camera is shy, I'll tell you what to do. You put on your best clothes. Put on a good smile. Tell Jesus to make you acceptable. But we want to see you. As a pastor to the Revival Church. I sent Dennis a, uh, a message yesterday. I said that please send me a picture of Hannah. Because I would have seen her every day. And I'm telling you, please bring those kids to Zoom. Hannah and Jaden and Zion, they're all growing up. And we want to see them. Hopefully by July, hopefully at least many of us can be together, I hope, as the Lord will lead. But till then, we want to meet, especially the kids, Neil and Kesia. I don't know, maybe she has, uh, she has long hair now, I don't know. <laughs> Praise God, we want to see all, all the kids, everybody, and all of you too. All of you. Hallelujah. What a blessed time we have. We look into the book of Luke today. We will continue the book of Luke. We were in Luke chapter 6 last week. We came to a place about the teachings of Jesus. And we have much to learn there. But right now we are going to hear Luke 7. Read for us. Up to verse 10. Yes. Maria, Luke 7, 1 to 10. Come and read it. Thank you. Luke chapter 7 from verses 1. When Jesus had finished saying all this to the people who were listening, he entered Capernaum. There a centurion servant whom his master was about to die. The centurion heard of Jesus and sent some elders used to him, asking him to come and heal his servant. When they came to Jesus, they pleaded earnestly, This man deserves to have you to be his 
because he loves our nation and has built our home. So Jesus went with them. He was not far from the house when the centurion sent friends to say to him, Lord, don't trouble yourself, for I do not deserve, deserve to have you come under my roof. That is why I did not even consider my life worthy to come to you. But say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I myself am a man under authority, with soldiers under me. I tell this one, go, and he goes, and that one come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he was amazed at him, and turning to the crowd following him, he said, I tell you, I have not found such great faith even in Israel. Then the men who had been sent returned to the house and found him. Praise God. Hallelujah. I would like you to focus on three personalities there. Our Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh, in the likeness of sinful flesh. The centurion who comes to Jesus with a need. And then a person, God the Father, how he works things in such a way that the work of God is manifest here. I'm speaking to the revival family who are not babies. We all are mature in Christ. We are growing to more maturity. Last week I was praying for rest, total rest in the church. When there is rest, we are able to grow. I'm sure you will agree with me and all those who hear us that uh, though we were shut down, it has led us to greater understanding of how frail and fragile the human nature is, the, how weak our bodies can be. It must have led us to a greater understanding of the greatness of God and the loving sovereignty of our Heavenly Father. If our Heavenly Father takes His eyes off us once, we are <laughs> dead ducks <laughs> in a shooting range. But praise God, the sovereignty and the authority of our Heavenly Father must be understood today. So today this text comes to you with all its beautiful stuff as the Holy Spirit will tell us. But I want to focus on God's sovereign power and authority over men. So first of all, I'm going to, as I read through where Jesus comes, where the centurion comes, and how God the Father begins to manifest His work will come to you. May the Holy Spirit use these verses, my words, my personality, everything in me to glorify God and also share with you wonderful people great insights and deep insights from the Word of God. Now when he had ended all his sayings in the audience of the people, he entered into Capernaum. Capernaum is a place where a fishing village, a very prosperous village. This is the second time in the circuit that Jesus is coming to Capernaum. Why did Jesus come back to Capernaum? Quick question as we go through. In chapter 4, we see that there was an amazing move of God through Jesus in Capernaum. A lot of people were healed. That ministry started in a synagogue. We did read that. We did go through that. We glanced at it. A man in the synagogue was demon-possessed. He was set free. And there was a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. In other words, faith was manifested there. And so God sent Jesus back to Capernaum. People of God, we must realize that Jesus was not a, a preacher who would do whatever he wanted. And I'm gifted with power. I'm gifted with ability. I will do what I want. No, 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 no. No. He went according to what his father told him. So his father and he, when he were praying, his heavenly Abba told him, all right, son, go back to Capernaum. We are more work. So when God continues to work in our lives, remember it is because he has not given upon you. He loves you. It can be a disease. It can be a financial problem. Again and again and again, when God comes back to you, remember a great miracle he wants to do in your life. Jesus comes back a second time to Capernaum as we read. Verse 2, a certain centurion servant, you see his name is not mentioned. Why do I say that? Because I believe he was also in the early church. He probably himself told his testimony to Matthew and Luke. By the way, this is mentioned only in Matthew and Luke, Luke not in the other Gospels. A certain centurion servant who was dear to him was sick and ready to die. The focus is now on the centurion who has a need. When we come to 
The next part, you see Jesus leaving for nine. As soon as the problem is over, I would think God sent Jesus this time to Capernaum for one person. Last time it was for so many people. Now it was for one person. As soon as the miracle is over, Jesus goes away to nine where we are going to see another great miracle. A certain centurion who was seen by God according to me from the foundations of the world. This centurion had a servant, the Malayalam translation says, a son. Both the translations in English says, a servant. A servant who was dear to him. Tells me so much about the centurion. He loved that servant, otherwise he wouldn't go out of the way. He must have tried a lot of things to get this, the young boy, the servant healed. Nothing was working, but he went to Jesus. Who was dear unto him was sick and ready to die. When he heard of Jesus, looking at the centurion, he heard about Jesus. What did he hear? Last time Jesus went to Capernaum, a lot of people were healed. And this man who was in touch with the Jewish authorities, this man who had built a synagogue for the people of God, was in touch with what was happening among the people of Israel. Somebody told him, you know what? This man, Rabbi Jesus... He came away last time and my God, that was an amazing thing. That came into his ears. What? A man can heal? You know, I am under the God Romulus. He must have thought he was a Roman centurion. The people of, of, of those Roman gods, they were known as Romulus. And he was under probably that demonic authority. He must have tried to call a lot of magicians. Nothing was happening. You know why nothing was happening? Because the glory of God had to come out in this man. Among the Gentiles... God was going to manifest his glory. So this man heard about Jesus. His faith begins when he hears about Jesus. Faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. Hallelujah. When you listen to the word of God, call your children near you. Let them hear. Probably they are little bachas, little babies. But they are hearing something supernatural which will get deposited in their spirits. As they grow, this will begin to take over their lives. Never say, throw the children away. Let us listen to the word of God. No, no, no. Keep the children with you. Praise God. Hallelujah. When he heard of Jesus, according to Luke, he sent unto him the elders of the Jew, beseeching him that he would come and heal his son. That shows this man's natural humility. He was a centurion. You have a hundred people under him. So he can definitely go and tell Jesus, Lord Jesus, come. Actually, in the book of Matthew, it says that he went straight to Jesus. But in the book of Luke, the description is a li little more explicit, or a little more uh, descriptive. Why? Not because they are at anger with each other. There is no contradiction there. Matthew, by nature, always is very precise and brief. We can look into that later. But here we see... He sends the rulers of Israel to go to Jesus. What does that show? He respected Jesus so much. Two, it also shows that he's a man of authority. Probably he didn't want to go straight away to Jesus. They came to Jesus who? The Jewish authorities came to Jesus, meaning some of the people who loved Jesus. They told him instantly saying, hey, this man is worthy for him. Whom we should do this. Now that's very strange during a time of grace. Jesus came for all mankind, right? What is the need for a recommendation? Because, number one, the Jewish people always believed that salvation was for them. And this man, who was close with the Jewish people, was not sure if Jesus being a Jew would really come and heal his servant who were Gentiles. And that is why even those Jewish leaders did not know the heart of God in Jesus Christ. So though they also said, you know what, this man is a good man, he's a friend of the Jews, though we are all under the Roman rule at this point of time, this man was good enough, rich man, good enough with a rich heart and a rich bank account to build a synagogue for us. Recommendation. Now we see verse 6, then it says Jesus went with uh, them. Now we should not get the idea that uh, Jesus was waiting for a recommendation to heal. Because Jesus was there just for this man. 
But I would like you to know again, focusing on Jesus here, Jesus was not going to be run with emotions. He clearly wanted to hear the Father's heart. He wanted to know how the Father is going to heal this Gentile. He clearly knew how things were going to happen. And I want you church to know as we grow in maturity, we are waiting to know how and we are waiting to see in prayer how God is going to use every one of us. As Sister Jesse was praying, she said, Lord, after this season, a mighty glory is going to be manifest. People of God, the great revival which we are all waiting for is going to pour out. And we are waiting to see. I am, on, I am on my knees almost every day. I say, Lord, lead, lead, lead. We want a mighty revival to come, not to be focused on a man or one family or a particular church. We want your revival for the whole world. And we are waiting for a leading. We don't jump into things. We don't jump into things we, like Peter did. God bless his memory. We are waiting on the Lord. You see the same picture here. Jesus knows he's in Capernaum for a purpose. But Jesus is not jumping into things. He's waiting. And now his confirmation has come. How? The Jewish people speaks. And as they speak, I believe the Holy Spirit begins to lead Jesus. Jesus says, I'll come. Not for the recommendation. Because he could understand the heart. And he could understand the heart of his heavenly father. Then Jesus went with them. When he was now not far from the house... The centurion sent friends to him again, saying unto him, Lord, trouble not yourself, for I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Again, you see a kind of humility from a man who has hundred soldiers under him. What an amazing humility. He says, Lord, don't come. I am not worthy that you should come to my house, though I am a Roman soldier Though I am over you all, I know something is telling me, Jesus, you're not an ordinary man. Something is telling me that I'm not worthy that you should come to my house. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come to you, but just say a word, and I servant shall be healed. What is happening with this man? Why this change of heart? I would like you to ask the Lord for a revelation this morning. Here is a man who wants his servant to be healed. Here is a man, according to Luke, who has just invited Jesus of Nazareth, the rabbi, who can heal, about whom he heard. He has invited Jesus into his house. There is a change in his heart and his mind. There is a tremendous change in his heart and his mind. He says, hey, maybe the master should not come. What do you think is happening? Let me give you a picture here. Let's imagine, for example, if the late Dr. Billy Graham were alive. Let's imagine that he is coming to our church. What will be the kind of preparations that you and I will be doing? A man blessed by God so much, used by God so much. And let us imagine a great man of God, made great by God, were coming to our house. We invited him. But as he comes to the airport, suddenly Pastor Shiju says, Pastor, brother, Dr. Graham, it's not okay, please don't come. Be at the airport. What, what does it sound like? Change of heart, change of mind. In the centurion's life, what was happening? Now unlike us, we are all born again, baptized, filled with the Holy Spirit, we stand with genuine servants of God. There is no distancing required. Not so, speaking about social distancing. <laughs> you know, no spiritual distancing. But you see this man spiritually distancing and even distancing himself geographically from Jesus. What is happening? I'm going to tell you what I think was happening. This man was preparing for the coming of the Lord to his house. What do you think you would be doing? This man began to call up his servants. Hey, Luke. Because Luke is a Gentile name, probably he had a servant like Luke. Hey Luke, hey Onesimos, get the chairs ready. Hey, you do like this, do, do like that. He was coming into authority. He was being himself. He was setting the house clean. Everything was being set. And the presence of Jesus was coming closer. As the presence of Jesus was co coming closer to his house, 
this man began to have a revelation of Jesus who truly was God the Father was beginning to give this man revelation through his own personality. Hallelujah. I hope God will open your ears today, my precious brothers and sisters. Think of that picture again, which I'm going to tell you. Here is Jesus of Nazareth, God himself in the flesh, coming closer and closer into the house of a Gentile. Here is a man of authority asking his people all around, get this thing done, that thing done. I believe as Jesus was coming closer, the revelation of hope Jesus was, was being manifest in his own self. He began to realize, my God, here is coming God himself into my house. And God is able to command one word. I am able to command and my servants are getting food ready for Jesus the rabbi. I am able to say a word and whoever is under me is able to do it. Because God has given me a certain kind of authority. I am an authority. The Roman government has given me an authority. This man began to realize his authority under the revelation that God was giving to him. Shall I tell you, God was beginning to move among the Gentiles through revelation. We read how Apostle Paul later writes to the Roman church, Romans chapter 3, 30, uh, 3, 3 or 3, I don't remember the words exactly. It says, God is willing to save the Jews by faith and the Gentile through faith. Through faith was happening here. Through the faith of the Son of God, who believed in God, who trusted in God, and now who is moving into the house of the Gentile through the faith of Jesus, God was pouring out the spirit of revelation and understanding and faith unto this Roman centurion. And he began to realize, my God, who did I call? Who did I call into my house? Hey, tell him, I am not worthy. That's what's happening. Again, from the scripture, I want to substantiate what I'm telling you. When Peter had a revelation of who Jesus really was, he said, Lord, go away from me. I'm not worthy. I'm a sinner. This is another picture of a man who has a revelation of, oh, oh my God, who did I call into my house? Lord, I'm not worthy. Please say a word. Please say a word. You know, I would say that he lost an opportunity, but I'm sure God touched him. That is God's plan. Hallelujah. Do you see that, people of God? The very revelation of God was walking into his house. And this Roman centurion was being gripped by who Jesus was. He had heard that Jesus was a rabbi who can heal. He probably thought that he would come to the house and, you know, give him some medicine or say a prayer over him or put his hand on his boy and he'll be healed. That is what he heard. Today, Revival Church, I want you to know, the Bible says to us, I have not seen or you heard what God has kept for us as children. And can I say we have been hearing about a saving Jesus. We have been hearing about a shepherding Jesus. We have been hearing about a healing Jesus. I want us to know a greater revelation of Jesus Christ is on the way. That is what is going to lead us into the revival. Somebody receive it in Jesus name. Let us pray these days for a greater revival of Jesus Christ. I've been with the Lord. I've been hearing his voice more clearly now. He has been telling me love songs I want you to know. Songs of love. He has been connecting me to some powerfully anointed men of God who have been praying. And I, they asked me to pray for them. It's amazing things are happening. In the midst of that, I am seeing my Jesus with clarity, with love. I want you to know he's the most tender person you can ever find. The other day, a man of God was telling me, somebody died, went to heaven. And, um, you know, that person was uh, about to get into the gates of heaven, angels were standing outside and looking into the book. The angels were seeing if this person was worthy to enter into heaven. And then the angels closed the book. You know why? Because with this believer, Jesus was there. The presence of Jesus is enough for God to cover all your drawbacks. And as this man of God was sharing this, he was crying. Because this lady who had died in a plane and gone to be with Jesus and seen this vision, she came back because husband prayed, Lord, I want her back. So she came back. She woke up from a death situation crying out, Jesus! This man of God 
whose cousin it was was telling me pastor after that she was so tender and kind even to servants we have to be anyway and she was saying the testimony the most tender heart person i've ever seen is jesus what a revelation so many things about our precious master we will must have revelation i want to talk to the younger generation the upcoming generation my precious 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 saints children you're now grown ups don't run after the fashion of a church please pray for the revelations of jesus christ i am what i am not because my father is a bad man we come from another background but i had a revelation of jesus christ i had revelations of my precious jesus when i was going through the toughest time of my life he spoke to me through the scriptures when i was going through the toughest time of my life i've never shared this one day i was sitting in my sister's home in bangalore india and i was reading a bible just just for the sake of reading the bible and then i felt a person standing near me and he and i began to walk outside i think it was for a day or three days i don't remember i very clearly knew it was a person walking with me a revelation i am what i am today because the revelations who jesus is and i want my children to know children my my younger generation do not be led because you are in the revival church and revival church this is the way we did things don't become a second generation the only way you can avoid becoming a second generation is to have a revelation of jesus christ please pray and i want to tell all of us sunday school teachers everybody in the revival church pray that your children will have a revelation of jesus christ that is the only thing that will bring another generation for jesus our focus is not a second generation for the revival church our focus is always a jesus focused jesus revealed generation i pray that you will pray for your children also and for generations to come that the revelation of jesus christ will be there everything else is secondary do it doesn't matter if you are you we are going to a church which calls itself another name but if you have the revelation of jesus christ and if you pray accordingly god will lead you to the right places in your generations your children will never be lost isn't that a great thing this gentile who never had any idea of who jesus was just heard of a rabbi who was going to help him he called him but as he was coming close jesus began to manifest in him the authority paul says in the book of galatians when god separated me from my mother's womb and revealed his son in me that's in galatians chapter 1 or chapter 2 see the revelation of jesus christ is being manifested in the centurion i hope he, i hope the holy spirit will show us all that pray that the holy spirit will show us that as jesus the son of god is coming the power and presence of revelation is coming hallelujah at the same time the revelation is being manifest in this man he's a man of authority what is jesus being revealed to him as a god of authority that is the same thing that paul says when it pleased god to separate me in my father's in my mother's womb he revealed himself in me the place where god manifests his son is in us that is why in the book of colossians paul says christ the hope of glory in you Hallelujah pray for revelations and pray lord reveal yourself in me in my character in my personality many people don't like their nature because deep inside we lose our temper we are angry probably inside um when uh, you know when we go through difficulties and when we find that it is because of somebody who is responsible we can be very angry inside i was very angry inside for many many weeks, days i said lord and i said lord please take away this bitterness from me please take away when i see people who are responsible i really i i used to go i can say it used to just get me up and the lord said son that is an area where i want to work in your life i'm telling you my testimony i said lord i'm sorry about it work in me lord and i said lord jesus heal me that i may forgive 
How great it was for Jesus to forgive them who put, them on the cro- put him on the cross. How much he would have loved out and called out all his disciples. How much he died for the whole world, even the Pharisees who put him on the cross. He loved them. I said, Lord, thank you for showing me that weakness. And I said, Lord, heal me. Peter died upside down. I'm sure on the cross, Paul had his head cut off in Rome. They all went through persecution. We don't know what happens to the world. Till February, everybody was going well. Suddenly things turned. We don't know. But one thing I tell you, pray that we will hold close to our Jesus. Pray that our hearts will always be clean and neat. And there are things, areas in our life which we are struggling, which we find it difficult to relate. A lot of young people struggle inside their heart about the thoughts that they have. They try to hide it. They try to keep it under a, under a carpet in their minds. They don't realize that it become, makes them weak. It can be a something, some small weakness. I want to tell you, Pray that Jesus will reveal himself in you. When Jesus reveals himself in you, you will see the resurrected Christ in you. None of those weaknesses inside you will ever take victory over you. You and I shall be more than conquerors, saints. Not only young people. It could be anybody. Just now I told you how I was upset with certain people for their irresponsibility. I love them. Everybody, we love everybody. But sometimes certain things and the Lord gave me healing. Today I stand in testimony to tell you that my heart has been healed. My inner heart has been healed a lot. Thank God for his healing. Praise the Lord. So many times, remember, let Christ manifest himself in us. How many of you think that Christ would come, like to come to our heart and deal with issues of the heart? I believe he can. Let's not keep Jesus outside. Let's not have a spiritual distancing with Jesus because Jesus will only bring healing and restoration and a greater love. Let Jesus Christ dwell in our hearts, not only in theory, not only in theology, but literally as the Holy Spirit has so designed Christ in us, the hope of glory. May all of us in the Revival Church, our children and whoever listens to us, even later during the broadcast and the webcast, may Christ reign in your heart. May the revelation of Christ in us begin to manifest people of God. This man had a revelation of Jesus and his authority. Number three about the revelation, Jesus reveals himself according to your need. Now this man is a man of authority. His son or his servant is dying. He had a paralysis. It was a paralytic. Jesus reveals to him in his nature. Jesus always reveals himself in us according to our need. Hallelujah. What is your need? Is Jesus going to reveal himself as a shepherd? Is he going to reveal himself as a doctor? Is he going to reveal himself as a financier? Is he going to reveal himself as somebody who gives hope? I tell you the fullness of God is in Christ Jesus. Everything that you and I need is in him. Pray that the world will come to know about this. They don't have to run around looking for somebody or someone to take care of their thirst. He is the one who will satisfy every inner thirst. Come to Jesus today. Oh yeah, you you and I know theology well. We know the Bible well. We are a holy people. That is all good in the sight of God. But which father will not want his children to be with him and talk to him every day? Which mother, however grown up that daughter may be, which mother will not desire that daughter to come and sit and have fellowship, revival, church, and all of us who are hearing, let me call out and tell you, he is desiring your fellowship, the Prince of Glory. God is desiring our fellowship. Hallelujah. Do we have this revelation? Who me? Who me? God wants to talk to me. God wants to sit with me. Let me tell you, I have so many testimonies to tell you. I said, Lord, You are here with me today in my house. You're talking to me, Lord. Who am I, Lord? He will sit with you. He will talk with you. He will remove those old bed sheets of all your languishing. He himself will put upon you new things. He is, may I say this word with all, he's your minister. No offense meant to anybody. I hope you can understand. He ministers to you. You know where I get my servanthood from him? 
to minister according to Jesus. May God reveal the Son in you. Hallelujah. That is why this man says, now I realize who you are. Hey, don't come to me. One of the reasons he said that is because the time for the Gentiles was slowly starting up. The resurrection had to be fulfilled. But God was already putting the seeds for the Gentiles. That is a don't come Lord. And then we see here, the man is explaining his authority. He's saying, I have soldiers under me. And I say to one, go. And he goes. To another, come. And he comes. And to my servant, do this. And he does this. My authority is explaining his authority. Now look at Jesus. When Jesus heard these things, he was surprised. The Bible says he marveled at him and turned him about. That means he said, all right, we are not going. He doesn't want us to go. That's okay. But look at his faith. And Jesus said to the people that followed him, I tell you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Focusing on the centurion, he is describing his authority there he is actually speaking his statement of faith. Very important. Even before Jesus would come into his house, he is sending word to Jesus. Now, not just a rabbi, rabbi for him. Now this man is looking at the Prince of Glory, a man of authority. Not only is this rabbi, he is a man of authority. And now he is describing his authority to Jesus. Lord, I'm a man, I'm a centurion. I can ask people to do this, they will do for me. I also have servants in the house. My word has such authority in my house. My word has such authority in my world. He is connecting to the authority of Jesus through the statement of faith. Many times I've taught all of us to speak out. Speak out your faith. Speak out your expectations to God. Speak out. God hears it. And together you and God agrees in word. And things will begin to happen. This is a dynamic of faith. God will remove COVID. God will bless us. After this time we will see a mighty revival. The Holy Spirit will do it. I speak this in the sovereignty of God. Not just my desire. But the desire that God has put in my heart. This man is detailing his statement of faith. When you pray. Let us detail our statement of faith. Where did this man get the revelation? From Jesus. And now with the revelation, this man's statement of faith has amazing power. People of God, we are more anointed than this man at this point of his life. We know our Jesus so much. When we pray, let us exercise praying the statements of faith. When we pray, let us pray, our God, our Almighty Father, our God who can, our God can. How many of us can say from today, our God can, He has and He will. Let me say that in Malayalam, Yangada Devam Pravartikim, Yangada Devam Pravartichitunda, Avaninium Pravartikim. We have similar verses in, hallelujah. We have similar verses in the Bible. Our God will help us. We will rise up and build. These are declarations of statement. Our children shall be a better generation than we are. Our children shall have revelations of the Lord Jesus Christ. They shall serve the Lord in their time. Hallelujah. Declarations of faith in the presence of God. And what did Jesus say? You can see that. Jesus was amazed. How many of you are ready to surprise Jesus with faith? No, no, I'm not becoming proud, but you know, when I collapsed in my bathroom, I could have told Jesus, Lord, I don't want to go. You think Jesus would put me in hell? No. I know he loves me so dearly. But I think that day I surprised him with faith. I said, Lord, I love you. I know that you died on the cross for me. This is nothing. You give me your strength. You give me your power, the power of resurrection. And I'm up and about. I can drive the car with the power of resurrection. This is nothing compared to what you did for me on the cross. I think I, he must have been so happy inside. Of course, he was concerned about my health. I speak as a man. Surprise Jesus with your faith. Take steps of faith. Move on. Nothing will happen to you. I'm not saying this illegally. I'm not saying do crazy things to please God. That's all wrong. Your Abba, your Heavenly Father, he loves you. Do everything in love. Faith working through love. Hallelujah. When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, turned about and said unto the people that followed him, do you see that? He turned about 
Jesus did not say, Jesus did not say, this guy invited me and am I supposed to listen to what he says? That's not the Jesus that we serve because Jesus knew the purpose was fulfilled. Jesus knew in the spirit that the boy or the servant was going to be healed. And Jesus said, that's okay. He turned around at the word of the Roman centurion. What does it tell you? God can act according to your word because he loves you. Hallelujah, because he wants your best. He's a kind God. He's a compassionate God. He doesn't look down on you because you failed. He doesn't call you a failure. Even if you feel that you have failed or your faith has failed or anything has failed, he doesn't call you a failure. He calls you a victorious son. Somebody receive it in Jesus. Even today there is healing taking place. Even today right now healing is taking place over the whole church. Some of you say, we are healed, we are okay. No, he wants to give you extra health, extra healing, so that when you pray, somebody else will be healed. Hallelujah! Our Father is a giving Father. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Jesus heard these things. He marveled at him and turned him about. That means in my KJV, we turned him about. That means Jesus just turned around and said unto the people that followed him, Hey, I have not found so great faith, not in Israel. Verse 10, they that were sent, returning to the house, found a servant whole that had been sick. A quick word for all the ministers, especially the leadership and all of you, my young brothers and sisters, upcoming in the ministry. See, Jesus did not, did not ask the centurion, hey, come and tell me if the guy is healed. Why? Because he knew that God the Father had already healed Many times, you know, we in our, in our immaturity, we pray for somebody and then we keep calling back, right? Are you healed? Are you healed? I tell you, if you walk with God, God himself will tell you, don't worry, you prayed, I have already healed. You don't even have to ask them. Let them come and tell you. That's a step of maturity. I hope we get it. But let us have that fellowship with God the Father. Hallelujah. Now we come to the final picture before I conclude. The third person in this picture. I told you, Jesus, the centurion, and God the Father. What was God the Father doing all these things? How was he orchestrating his works here? We all agree that these are works of God, which Jesus completed in the flesh. When our children say telio or telio, whatever they want me to say, it means it is finished. What was that Jesus finished? The works of God was finished through a man in this world, on this earth. And on the cross, the final thing was done. He said, it is finished. It started, everything started in this world regarding Jesus. Jesus was busy doing the works of God, not his own works. We should always remember that. I am doing here the work of God. I am not doing my work. This is the work of the Lord. I have been given an opportunity to become a partner with my God, my Jesus, to do His work. You have been called to become partners. Are you called into full-time, part-time, whatever it is? Remember, you are a partner with Jesus Christ. Never think of doing a ministry because, because of something. Be a partner of Jesus. Now here you see God the Father and God the Son partnering. God was leading Jesus back to Capernaum because there was a work that had to be done in the heart of a Gentile. The first time God used his works for Jewish people, for his own people. Now the news about this came to a Roman soldier. God knew it would happen. Now Jesus being sent back into Capernaum to see a Gentile. You see Jesus went by the leading God was leading Jesus. How was God orchestrating his works? He was leading Jesus, the anointed people of God, servants of God. Here is a message for you from my heart. Be led all the time. Let's never try to do things in our own way. We go by the leading of the Holy Spirit, always in fellowship. The more mature you become like Jesus, the more leading you must have from the Holy Spirit. And you know what you should do for that? Ask Jesus for more fellowship. It's very simple. Ask Jesus for greater grace. That is all. Lord, give me grace to have fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Lord, have me, give me grace to know what the Father is saying at this time. Lord, give me grace. It's about grace, people of God. The other day, the Lord was telling me, 
we start in grace and it is all grace i personally the lord told me he told me it is not one person inspiration and 99 pers perspiration no it is 100 percent grace 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 so here you see a mature son being led by almighty god to go back to capernaum god was working through leading two god was working in the life of the centurion can god touch a gentile he can touch a gentile hallelujah god was working in the life of this gentile supernaturally before jesus was going to go back to capernaum god was beginning to work i tell you this word you shall go forward and i shall open gates of iron for you hallelujah and i shall give you the riches i shall give you the riches of darkness isaiah says in 45 what is happening the riches in the gentiles Christ in you, the hope of glory. God was leading his son Jesus to the hope of glory that was inside the Gentiles. Hallelujah. God is preparing this man. People of God, we know that no nation is hated by God. God loves all people. He loves the Christian nation of America. He loves all nations. He loves all people because they are all his. The Hindu and the Muslim and the Parsi and the, and the everybody is loved by God. And these days, I want you to pray, Father, may these riches of glory hidden inside men be manifest these days. Let them start seeking a real God. Hallelujah. Let them start even Christians. Let them come out of their ideas of God. Let them begin to seek a real God. Hallelujah. Somebody pray. And I tell you, God is using situations like COVID to bring him glory. People are really calling out on God. Many people call upon their pastor. Many people call upon their doctrine. Many people call upon their pet ideas of God. I tell you, the days are coming when people will call upon the real God. And I'm calling upon all brothers and sisters all over the Christians. Every denomination, my brothers and sisters. As things happen, it's God's desire that we really have our eyes open to His works. Here is a Gentile in those days looked down upon by the Jewish people in those days. God is giving him grace to call upon Jesus. He must have had an option to try sorcerers, magicians, all these people. He must have gone to his own uh, priests of his religion. Nothing worked. You know why nothing worked? God was stopping all those doors. A demon can take a demon out, just to let you know. Probably a doctor could have healed this paralytic. Anything is possible. But God was closing all the doors. So that he would come and hear about Jesus and come to God. Look at the way God works. Do you have situations where everything is closed in your life? Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Because God himself is going to open a door for you. Nothing is working. Everything is down. Everything is dim. Don't worry. That is why in the first time Pastor George led for us 2 Corinthians 1, 9 and 10. Paul himself says, we despaired we the sentence of death was upon us that our trust should be in god hallelujah 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 this man the sentence of death was manifesting in the life of his servant every door was closed who do you think closed the door god the father closed the door why did he close the door so that this man would hear about jesus and act by calling jesus of the jews during his time you see how god is working number one through a son who is willing to be led a mature son two he prepares the ground number three he makes faith to work in both sides his son is full of faith this man has been prepared with faith they both speak the centurion speaks his faith jesus says yes to it god the father approves healing take place what a beautiful picture we have here i hope the holy spirit will give us more revelations of Jesus Christ. I want to conclude now and pray. We will be praying for the healing of all of us. It doesn't have to be COVID. 